Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. This is Sports Fan News. I'm Joe Borgen. This is going to be a quick Philadelphia Phillies versus Marlins series preview where hopefully this one goes better than the last one for the Phillies as they now have a four-game stretch to go up again to Miami Marlins down in Miami this time. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. It really helps. Let's get right into it. Tonight is Eflin versus Rodgers. Trevor Rodgers just come off of dominating the Phillies his last time out against them. Um, the Phillies, obviously, in the Red Sox series, when I did that series recap, check that out if you want to uh, have a recap for that series, I would appreciate it. Um, they just did not even get enough people on base in the first two games to even generate poor runners and score position numbers. Then in the last game, they went three for nine, which obviously is a good average because in baseball, uh, that would equate to a good average um, in other places, obviously being at 35% or higher would not be as good, but hitting at that rate is actually pretty good. So um, that would be for the Phillies, but they couldn't even get enough people on base in that series. So you got to get enough people on base. I don't think against one of the best pitchers in baseball who's 6-2 and two with a one seven four to start the season is going to be the guy to do it. So I would say um, in this outing, Eflin's still been good this year, but of late he's been good where he started to look really good and like a guy that's a potential very solid second of your rotation guy for a stretch there and now has just been good Zach Eflin again which is no problem with that it's just against one of the hottest pitchers in baseball and Trevor Rogers I would have to give that nod advantage to them and say that they would have the advantage in this series when it comes to the lineup they already have the lineup so I'll go through it for game one is uh, McCutcheon in left field batting first, Adubo Herrera in center field all the way up to second at 284 with eight RBIs for him. Gene Segura at second base batting third, hitting 328, doing great uh, at the dish. Uh, was doing good in the field before that error, then has been a little bit shaky since, but hopefully he'll get back to it. I think he can. Reese at first base batting fourth, Boehm fifth at third base, Miller sixth in right field tonight. Knapp seventh at catcher. Torres is the shortstop tonight with the lefty on the hill, even though Maton has reverse splits. I think um, he should be getting put in a little bit more against lefties, but Torres has looked good himself, so he's getting rewarded and getting put in eighth. Then you have Eflin at nine. Then you have who looks like a new Phillies killer, Jazz Chisholm leading off at second base. Another Phillies killer, the new Martin Prado, Miguel Rojas, batting second at shortstop. Jesus Aguilar batting third at first base, who's uh, come up big against the Phillies at different times. I wouldn't consider him a killer, though. Right fielder Duvall batting fourth. Third baseman Brian Anderson, who's also a Phillies killer, batting fifth, so we wonder why we struggle against the Marlins. Corey Dickerson in left field batting sixth. Sandy Leone at catcher batting seventh. Magnus Sierra in center field batting eighth. And Trevor Rogers, obviously the pitcher, is batting ninth. So that's the lineup. I think the... Uh, Pitching matchup goes to the Marlins in this one, so I would say I would have to lean towards them in this game, unless if the Phillies are able to surprise and have one of those games. They are one of the best scoring teams in the first inning, but then when they don't score in the first inning, they tend not to have any runs happen for them until later in the bowl game, until about the seventh or eighth inning, which is a big issue if you can't get anything going in the middle gaps there. And I don't know if Rodgers is a guy that's easy to jump on. That's the only chance I think they would have in this one. But then in the second game, hopefully Velasquez's fingers, since that's something that just flares up and goes away like he described the other day, does it in this game because he's going against Alcantara. That'll be a good matchup with how Vinny's been pitching lately and how Alcantara bounced back against the Phillies after just pitching solidly this year. So I think that's a very even matchup with how both of those guys are pitching right now. So hopefully Vinny's able to go in that one and the Phillies are able to even up the series because that's an even matchup going in. Hopefully the Phillies are able to prevail and just get something going at the batter's box. Swing for a little bit more contact is a problem with the whole league, but swing for a little bit more contact. Stop over swing. Stop trying to go for the biggest hit on the planet. It, just get a hit to drive people in. Now we move on to the third game. They got the infamous TBD going in Miami. It'll probably, it could be that petite guy, unless if he's injured, because he's been pitching, and he pitched well again the other day against the Mets. I would have to imagine it would be him if he's able to pitch, and he pitched well against the Phillies last time. So if he goes up against Nola, obviously Nola's the better pitcher, but the Phillies have to be able to field, obviously, with him in the field. You can't make blunders. He made three errors in his last start. And he's got to be able to hone it in because his ERA is all the way up to a 3.94. He hasn't been as sharp. He said it himself in his recent outing. So he's got to hone it in. If they're going against that petite guy, whoever you say his name, they got to be able to actually hit him and get going because even a Mets lineup that's been more consistent than ours um, has not even hit him in his ass out. And so I would assume it would be him unless if he's banged up. And that's why there's a TBD for that game. I obviously don't follow all things Moreland, so I'm not sure why they have a TBD for that game. Where in the fourth and final game of the series, that would be at 12-10, 
on Thursday, that is going to be Pablo Lopez against Spencer Howard. Howard looked great through two innings against the Red Sox, then really tampered off. He has to find a way to find his consistent velo that he's able to stay at for the game and then find that velo you can ramp it up for. Once he does that, it'd be better and be able to go at least five and start from there and then build. So that's really what he has to be able to do so he can kind of get to at least a, a Valdi level from when Nathan Avaldi was younger, where when he was with the Dodgers, he would go when he was healthy through five innings or about five and a third and then have to cap it there. But that's something to build off of. Right now, he's only going two and a third, three innings. you got to be able to build from that. So I would have to give them the advantage in that pitching matchup. So the Phillies are going to really have to take advantage of Nola, hopefully having a bounce-back start. He's going to be in Miami. It's going to be warm. He loves the warm weather. Hopefully the roof's open that night. Hopefully it's a warm night down there. So he loves that, so hopefully he's able to bounce back there. And then Vinny Velasquez being able to pitch, because in game one, yes, Eflin's pitching, so yes, they could win, but that's if I think they jump on Rodgers early. They're a good first inning team. Once you don't do that, I don't think you have much of a chance. they got a better pitching matchup there. In game two, could the Phillies um, foreseeably actually win that game? Um yeah, that's the one that they need to, I think, honestly, be able to bounce back because I don't think they're going to have a good chance in game one. Vinny Velasquez against Alcantara. People have been hitting him better this year. The Phillies couldn't square him up this week, square up Alcantara, and then get the win from Nola because it's going to be hard with Spencer Howard yet to expect a win with him just sits. Even if he pitches solid, he pitched good through two. He doesn't go deep in the game because then he has that inning. Kendrick-esque, I don't, I'm not saying he's going to be Kyle Kendrick, but just Kendrick-esque, he's going to be a good pitcher. It's just taking time that he just can't get through a certain point in the game. So I hope you all enjoyed this series preview. I think the Phillies have to take two out of two in this series. It's going to be tough for them to do it because they're going up against Trevor Rogers and going up against Lopez in this series, both of them who have been pitching the best for the Marlins. And then that petite guy, if he is the TBD, has been good against them. But you must take two out of two. You must stay kind of at that middle ground. You're one game under 500 coming into this series. You have to stay at least at the middle ground right now because you're winning through a lot of flaws. And then hopefully when those flaws dissipate, you're able to kind of rise. I hope you all enjoyed this series preview to the Philadelphia Phillies versus Miami Marlins. Have a great day and pleasant day. And go Phillies. Hopefully this series is at least a split and not a bad loss like the last series against the Marlins. Peace out and stay safe, everybody.